<laughs> right. So itu kita sampai uh, spring. Uh, okay, so soalan 58. Muka surat 29. Okay, soalan 58. Muka surat 29. Okay. Wait, susah tu nak setting. Uh, cikgu dah sampai perak malam tadi. Uh, so cikgu setting daripada rumah cikgu pula. Okay. Dah sedia semua? Sedia. Okay. 58. What is unchanged uh, when spring is compressed and released repeat, 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 repeatedly? Uh, repeatedly. Okay. So, yang ini jawapan dia. Okay. Hooks kata force directly proportional to extension. So, maknanya kalau ikut uh, hukum hooks, ini adalah MV. Ini adalah responding variable. Okay. Itu ikut kepada hooks law. So, apa yang constant? F, K, X. Yang constant ni K lah. Okay. Kita tak boleh ada tiga, uh, kita hanya ada tiga variable. MV, RV, responding variable. So, another one will be CV, constant variable. So, constant variable is K. So, K akan relate kepada apa? K akan relate kepada the stiffness of the spring. Okay, the stiffness of the spring. Right, kalau macam uh, elastic potential energy. Okay, elastic potential energy. What is the formula? You have two formula for elastic potential. First, elastic EP, elastic potential, half Fx. Okay, another one is half K x square. Okay, so kenapa dia tak boleh constant? Sebab nanti f, x ni ubah. F ni ubah. Okay, kalau dua-dua berubah, mana boleh dia jadi constant? Uh, so, potensi salah. Displacement adalah dia punya x. So, x berubah. F, f pun berubah. So, yang tak berubah hanyalah stiffness. Okay, clear tak guys tu? Cukup rasa tu okay kot. Alright. So we go to the next one. Okay, 2017. Alright, ha, ni penting sebab yang kali ni dia style dia dibagi. Original length is 20 cm. Bila dia letak uh, 400 gram, the length of the spring become 25. Okay. So first, what is the value of x? Okay, berapa dia punya extension? 5 cm. 5 cm. Itu kena faham dulu. X is 5 cm. Okay, so dia benda ni ratio tau. Kalau kalau tak masuk formula pun tak apa. Contohnya, kita nak masuk formula tu macam ni. Kalau 400 gram. Okay, so cikgu buat macam ni lah. Mass, 400 gram. Right, kalau cikgu tanya force, mg. So, dia akan jadi 0.4 kg. Okay, 0.4 kg times 10. So, basically adalah equal to 4 newton. So, selalu dia akan pakai gram-gram. So, kalau 400 gram, 4 newton. 100 gram, 1 newton. Okay, 200 gram, 2 newton. Okay, so dia punya X waktu ni adalah 5 cm. Right. So, kalau kita buat dia punya ni adalah kalau cikgu double up, contohnya 8, ini pun double up. Ha, gitu. Right. Kalau kita kurangkan, contoh cikgu kurangkan become half 2 newton, from 4 newton become half. So, this one pun akan half 2.5. Okay. Because they directly proportionate. Okay. Soalan dia, what is the elastic potential energy? Okay. Elastic potential energy, as I told you, we have two equation. So, you have elastic potential half f x or if you have the spring constant if you have the spring constant it will be half k x square okay so which equation kita boleh pakai 
Half fx. Okay, so try to calculate half. The F, as I told you, the force is 4 Newton. Okay, 4 Newton. Kita ambil force. Okay, this is the mass. 400 gram. So the force is 4 Newton. So half times 4 Newton times okay, 5 cm tukar meter. Jadi berapa? 0.05. Zero point zero five. Okay, so macam mana? Kalau kata lupa five cm, nak tukar meter, one meter, hundred cm. So cm potong, bagi seratus zero point zero five meter. Okay, so kat sini kena zero point zero five. So korang akan dapat zero point zero one Newton meter or this is also known as 0 0.01 joule. Okay. If you want to use the second equation, boleh juga. Tapi kena buat another step which is the first step. Renyah lah, banyak kerja sikit. So, F equals to Okay, X cari K. Okay, K akan jadi uh, F over X. So, force kita kira 4 Newton. And X kita dah kira tadi in meter, 0 0.05 meter. So, 4 divided by 0 0.05 Okay, so 4 divided by 0 0.05, you get 80, uh, meaning if you give 80 Newton, it will extend 1 meter. Okay, lepas tu masukkan dalam formula tadi, half F is 4, eh sorry, K. Uh, K80 Newton per meter times X 0 0.05 meter square. So, meter potong. Uh, satu meter tu potong. Okay. Uh, so, jangan lupa square. Okay. So, you will get the same answer. 80. Okay, first 0 0.05, jangan lupa, 0 0.05 square times 80 divided by 2, dapat, eh? 0 0.1 kan? 0 0.1 lah. Sekejap eh, cikgu salah kira ke? Ah oh, lah, 0 0.1, sorry, sorry. Salah tekan. 0 0.1. Thank you, begitu. Okay, 0 0.1. Hmm. 0.1 Okay Itulah dia Okay so another kind of question For this It be like this They give you a graph Of force Against extension So, this is 4 Newton and for example, this is 0 0.05 meter. Okay. So, macam mana nak kira dia? If you have a graph. Okay. If you have a graph. That energy, okay, nak kira energy tu, is basically area under the graph. Uh, okay, so area under the graph is representing elastic potential energy. 
Okay, ini level 1 punya. Level 1 maksudnya dia bagi graph, force dengan extension tu dalam unit meter. Okay, so korang kena just using the area. Kalau macam ni guna je area, half, F, X. Okay, so itu level pertama. Level pertama, tak ada trick. Okay, yang ada trick macam ni. Dia bagi graph. Ini F. Tak tipu. Dekat sini X. Ha, tipu dia dekat sini. Sentimeter. So dia buat sini. 5 sentimeter. Ini 4. Okay. So student ingat ni. Nak cari ni cari area. Half. F. X. Tapi problem dia dekat sini. Half. Four. Salah dia dekat sini. Dia pakai five. Okay. So kalau yang ini. Jawapannya akan jadi. Ten. Newton. Centimeter. Okay. Kalau Newton centimeter. Betul. Tapi kalau tulis 10 Joule, salah. Okay, for example, in paper 2, kalau korang still use that unit, Newton centimeter, dia bagi betul. Tapi kalau korang tulis je 10 Joule, it will be wrong. Kenapa? Joule is equal to 1 Newton meter. Uh, 1 Joule, 1 Newton meter. Sebab tu dia tak boleh terima Newton centimeter. So dia punya trick is this. Always load X T X exists first. Okay. Kena tengok dia punya unit. Ah, uh, Tu trick dia yang dia bagi. Okay. Last one. Another trick, another trick is like this. This is force and this is length. Okay, so 20 cm, 4, 25 cm. Uh, so kat sini ada dua trik. Yes, kita nak cari area under the graph. Okay, the first trick is you need to find X because X dia adalah 25 minus 20. Ah, to different dia. Okay. After that, trick number two. 5 cm. Convert to m. Okay. Ni biasa soalan-soalan yang biasa korang akan jumpa in your trial examination. Ah. Okay. Ada tak yang mana-mana yang korang nak tengok ke? Yang mana cik cikgu laju ke? Okay. Cikgu ulang balik yang ni. The first one, the graph is just force and extension and the extension is memang dia dah bagi in meter. So there's no trick dekat sini, tak ada trick. You just find the area under the graph. Okay, you find the area under the graph, cari je luas, luas segi tiga. Satu per dua kali tapak kali tinggi, okay, one over two time F time X. Okay, ni tak ada trick. Yang ada trick, contohnya, the, the first trick adalah dia bagi force tapi the extension is in Sentimeter. So, kena buat apa? Kena tukar dulu. Okay, tukar dulu jadi meter. Okay, and the last trick is, dia tak bagi extension. Dia bagi kita length. So, we need to find the extension, number one. And if it is in centimeter, you need to change to meter. Uh, okay. 
So, other further question do you want to ask? Arisa or anyone? Hana, Irene, the soalan? Before check masuk yang baru. Mana Alia nak? Selalu dia bising. Mana Alia? Alia? Alia, okay Alia? Okay. Dah mandi dulu Alia? Dah. Ya yeah, ke? Cuma sebuka je. Okay. Ah, barulah masuk 2018. Alright. So, 2018 ada 11 soalan. Okay, diagram show ice skating, skiing on ice. What can be done to increase the speed of the ice skater? Okay. Yang pertama, cikgu baru pertama kali tahu ada ice skater pakai tangki. Yang ni mungkin ada luncur laju ke apa, cikgu tak tahu aku. Okay, so dia pakai macam tangki macam tu. Lepas tu dia tanya, ha, macam mana kita nak bagi dia laju? Okay, so dia nak increase the speed. How to increase the speed? Okay. Ha. Alright. So, apa yang boleh, the question is how you want to increase the speed? Okay, in your opinion, how? Okay, so jumpa in that chat. Yes, okay, sebab apa? Sebab kalau, ni kira kebat lah, kena fikir lah. So, kalau korang tambahkan rate of combustion, what happened? Dia akan increase, basically akan increase dia punya momentum to the back. Okay, what is momentum? Mass times velocity. Okay. Kalau atas increase the mass. Okay, relationship is. Ha, lagi berat. Logik lah ni. Lagi perlahan. Uh, so the answer is C. Okay. A tak boleh. Uh, rate combustion meaning uh, minyak tu bila dia bakar dia macam tau. Okay rate combustion. So bila kita ada higher rate of combustion dia akan lagi banyak heat. So lagi banyak heat keluar lagi banyak ni ke belakang ni. So force yang ke belakang ni ke kiri akan tolak dia ke depan. Kenapa api tu ke kiri, dia tolak ke depan. Based on what? Based on Newton third law. For every action, there will be equal and opposite reaction. So, force daripada api tu ke belakang. Yes, betul. Tapi because of that, tolak dia ke depan. Okay, macam nak bagi lagi banyak force ke belakang? How to increase the force? So, if you increase the force, you will increase the acceleration. Increase acceleration, increase speed. So, cara dia adalah bakar. Okay, lagi banyak pembakaran. Okay. 2.1. 2.2 pula. 2.2 is graph. Motion graph. So, kalau graph, soalan dia, daripada dulu selalunya dia akan bagi the graph of velocity time. Tapi in this question, korang boleh tengok kat sini. Ini perangkap dia adalah dia bagi displacement time. Okay. So, kesalahan lazim is bila dia tanya find the displacement, kita dah biasa. Oh, find the displacement. Uh, cari area. Kita pun cari area. Oh, darab 12. Darab tinggi. Okay, sorry. Ini trapezium. Trapezium A plus B times C. So, kita pun buat. Oh, ni A. Bawah ni B. Tinggi ni C. So, 1 per 2. A dia dari 4 sampai sini. 4, B dia, the whole one, 12 and times the height, 20. So, at the end, potong, you got 10 times 16. Okay, 160. Lepas tu, bila cari, oh, D. Okay, tapi dah kena tipu. Okay, kenapa cikgu kata kena tipu? 
But this is this graph. Yes, displacement time graph. Velocity time graph, you cari area under the graph. Tapi itu velocity time graph. This is displacement time graph. So, kita kena faham apa maksud pergerakan dia ni. Okay. Pergerakan dia ni bermaksud the first four second, okay, for the first four second, dia gerak macam ni. Okay. Ni ramai juga sangkut 2018. Okay. So, cuba buat macam ni. For the first four second, dia bergerak 20 meter. Haa. Uh. Kosong sampai 20 meter. Wah, aku rasa Okay. Okay, so berapa lama dia bergerak? 4 second. Okay, dia gerak dari sini. Gerak, 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 gerak. Sampai sini. Dia ambil masa 4 second. Okay, so kalau kita cari dia punya gradient. If kita kira gradient, kita dapat apa? Ha, gradient dapat apa? Ha. For displacement time graph, the gradient represent represent what? Velo city. Sebab gradient y tolak y X tolak X. So, Y is displacement over time. Okay. So, displacement dia 20 minus 0, 4 minus 0. Kita dapat 5 meter per second. So, dia gerak 1 saat 5 meter, 1 saat 5 meter, 1 saat 5 meter. Tapi, 4 second dia sampai 20. Okay. Lepas tu, daripada 4 sampai 8, apa dia buat? Dia duduk kat sini. From 4 until 8 second. Duduk kat sini. Tak gerak-gerak. Okay. Lepas tu kemudian dia patah balik. Dia patah balik. Another 20 meter to the left. In another 4 second. Okay. The question asking you displacement. Okay. Displacement maksudnya apa? The shortest path from Starting point to end point. Okay, so berapa jawapan dia? Cukup tunggu jawapan korang. Zero. Zero. Yes. Okay, zero. Because they start and they end at the same direction. Okay, same position. Shortest path from starting point to end point. Dapatlah zero. Okay, so jawapan yang salah tadi adalah yang jawab donkey. Okay, kalau 40 ni mewakili apa pula? 40 representing? Distance travel. Distance travel. Because dia pergi kanan 20, dia pergi kiri balik 20. So distance travel is 40. Uh, displacement is zero. Soalan graph memang popular keluar exam lah. Soalan graph ni sebab dia 2.2. 2.2 ni kira memang graph. 2.2 tu korang belajar graph je. So sebelum-sebelum ni korang tengok the question is always velocity time, velocity time, describe the motion. Okay tapi in this case dia bagi displacement time. Okay. Inertia. Okay. Just remember inertia doesn't have any equation. Yang ada Dia hanya related to mass. If you have bigger mass, you have bigger inertia. So what is inertia? Inertia meaning you will have a bigger tendency to remain or retain your motion. So kalau kita tak gerak, kita remain tak gerak. Okay, if we are stationary, we remain stationary. Or if we move with constant velocity, we will remain moving in constant velocity. Uh, 
Ha, kalau Newton second law kata apa? Until external force, eh, Newton first law. Until external force act upon it. Okay, so inertia selain daripada mass, korang kena ingat, korang belajar Newton first law in inertia. Okay, there's no formula for SPM. So diagram 3 show two identical top, F and G. Several pieces of aluminium are placed on top of G. Both top are then spun simultaneously. So maksudnya nak bagi tahu yang ini bigger mass. Sebab kita letak aluminium atas dia. Yang F ni smaller mass. Okay, ataupun lighter, heavier. Okay, so soalan dia apa? Itu je. Which concept that cause stop G to take a longer time to stop? Kenapa G tu berat bila dia pusing, dia lambat nak berhenti? Because of inertia. Okay, kenapa force dia ni? Sebab force yang kita bagi for both are same. Okay. So, uh, alright. So, 63. Okay. Siapa tak pernah naik roller coaster? Uh, cung aku sikit. Ada tak yang tak pernah naik roller coaster? Cikgu tak pernah naik roller coaster. Sedap tanya je. Cikgu tak pernah naik roller coaster sepanjang hidup cikgu. Kenapa? Sakat. Kenapa? Ya Allah, scary lah. Kau tak takut ke naik? Cikgu tak pernah naik? Kau, siapa siapa yang tak pernah naik? Saya naik level 1 punya. Level 1 tu macam mana lukis? Saya suka. Tak, saya pendek. Yang paling pendek <laughs> boleh jumpa kat timpak ke. Oh, yang macam fun fair tu? Eh, fun fair ada ke? Tak, tak, tak. Dia tinggi sikit tapi taklah tinggi sescary yang part. Ada kalau kalau kat Malaysia mana yang paling scary? Ada ada kat tempat yang ada paling scary? Kalau kat Malaysia kat mana? Kat Genting. Malaysia, eh? Malaysia tak ada. Ah, Malaysia tak ada. Ha? Malaysia tak, tak ada. ada. Malaysia tak ada. Tak ada kat USS. Dia Singapore scary dia. Oh, cikgu pergi yeah, USS. Tak Cikgu pernah pergi USS tapi cikgu tak pernah naik roller coaster. Cikgu memang tak pernah naik mana-mana roller coaster. Cikgu pergi mana-mana yang timpak pun tak pernah naik roller coaster, memang tak pernah. Scary. Cikgu e, Tak, cikgu menjaga jantung. Jantung tau tak? <laughs> Saya naik roller coaster yang dia pusing 360 tu. Yang dia dua rider je. Kat mana? Uh, USS. So, tak tahu. Cikgu tak nak naik lah. Okay. So, ni perkara yang memang hmm, tak takkan buat kot. Uh, yang ni cikgu takkan buat uh, apa lagi lah. Yang tali-tali, tali tali lompat lepas tu Naik balik, naik balik tu apa benda nama dia? Bagi jumping. Bagi jumping. Haa, ah, bagi jumping. Besok pergi lah orang buat. Uh, tak mampu. Sky gliding, sugar gliding. Sugar gliding tu binatang. Uh, sky dive. Sky dive. Ah, sky diving. Ah, tu memang tak mantap lah. Benda-benda ketinggian. Cikgu takut tinggi? Patutlah. Hmm, tak boleh. Okay. Diagram 6 show few passenger. So cikgu tak tahu apa perasaan orang ni naik. Tak pernah naik. Okay, so which physics law principle explain the importance of using a safety bar? Uh, okay, so kenapa ada safety bar? Kenapa perlu ada safety bar? Uh, so, apa yang membuatkan perlu ada safety bar? Okay. <coughs> so, first principle conservation of momentum. Tengok dulu, momentum kata apa? Kita kena faham kalau momentum ni berkait dengan Pelanggaran, collision. Ada korang naik roller coaster tujuan dia nak berlanggar? Tak ada. Okay. So, A tu kita boleh kata salah lah. Okay. And the next one. Uh, apa? The next one is conservation of energy. Okay. So, kalau energy dia tak akan buat gambar macam tu. Kalau energy dia akan buat gambar roller coaster macam ni. Maksudnya so, roller coaster dari atas ni turun. That's the energy changes from 
gravitational potential energy. So it change kat bawah, dia tukar all the energy changes, dia tukar jadi kinetic energy maximum. And then dia naik balik ada ketinggian, dia jadi balik gravitational potential energy. Okay, so that one if dia nak tanya pasal energy. Tapi dia tak tanya pasal roller coaster, dia tanya pasal kenapa kita ada safety bar. Okay, so Newton second law pasal apa? Newton second law is related to force. Uh -huh. Okay, related to force. So Newton first law related to inertia. Sebab kalau roller coaster tu dah bergerak ke depan and then tiba-tiba dia nak turun balik ke bawah so korang akan cuba kekalkan ke depan and then jatuh balik belakang. So that bar, ada tujuan dia sama macam seat belt. So this one is for jawapan dia Newton first law. Lepas tu terbuka. Uh, Wih jangan. Oh, oh, Astaghfirullah. Another thing. Cikgu dah ingat kenapa cikgu tak naik. <laughs> cerita tu. Cerita yang... Ah, apa nama dia? Sekejap. Bukan scary movie. Apa nama dia? Final Destination. Oh, ya. Yeah. That creepy story, you know. Wow. Cikgu, cikgu ingat lagi cikgu pernah naik. Cikgu dah tengok yang the first one kot. Yang accident lori tu. Accident lori balak. I'm not sure. First one, second one. So, seminggu cikgu tak naik kereta after that. Because of that movie. <laughs> Because of that movie tu memang cikgu tak naik. Oh, uh, scary gila. Okay. Right. So, 2.5. Effect of force. Okay, diagram 5 show force exert on the cyclist. The mass of the bicycle and the cyclist 9.5 kg and 70 kg respectively. Okay, two mass there. Uh, what is the acceleration of the cyclist? Okay. So, dia bagi tahu orang ni basikal ni 70 kg. Uh, basikal dia punya berat 9.5 kg. Beratnya basikal. Okay, there's the mass of the bicycle. Okay, soalan dia, what is the acceleration of the cyclist? Okay, first, kita tengok dulu. Is it balance or unbalanced? To the first question yang korang kena tanya. Balance or unbalanced? Step by step. Okay. Balance ke unbalanced? Unbalanced. Unbalanced. So, if unbalanced, the formula will be net force equals to ma ma. Okay. So, berapa dia punya the value of the unbalanced? Bigger force minus smaller force. So, 550 to the right. Minus 150 to the left. So you get 400. Okay. Meaning, dah tolak baki dia 400. Newton kata when there is a net force, this is the net force. Okay, this is the value of net force. When there is a net force, the object will accelerate. So mass dia kita nak ambil mana? Mass dia akan jadi 79.5. Times A. So, cari A. Okay. Uh, so, kita dapat 5.03 ms negative 2. Okay. The first question always asking this. Is the question balance or unbalanced? Another way to know is it balance or unbalanced, tengok soalan. Kalau soalan tanya acceleration je, acceleration tu dah wajib dah jawapannya. Unbalanced. Okay. Tapi kalau kata balance, acceleration dia berapa? Kalau balance, tak kisahlah berapa dia punya keadaan, acceleration will be zero. So, apa keyword dia untuk balance? Okay, ada dua keyword nak tahu soalan tu uh, related to balance force. Apa dua keyword tu? Uh, siapa boleh bagi jawapan? What is the two keyword to determine that the question is a balance force question? Okay, apa dua keyword dia? Stationary. Yes, good. First one. 
Second one. Constant velocity. Uniform or constant velocity. Yep, betul. Okay, betul. Itu kalau balance. Alright. So, 2.4 habis. So, after that, 2.5. The diagram show experiment conduct to study relationship between time of impact T and impulsive force. Okay, so kita tahu the formula F theoretically MV minus MU over T. So based on the equation and the theory, if you want bigger impulsive force, need shorter time of impact. Okay. And macam cikgu terangkan sebelum ni, the difference between force and impulsive force is impulsive force related to momentum. And when we learn about momentum, momentum is related to collision. And you have three type of collision. So, bila kita kata impulsive force is related to force when something collide, berlanggar. So dalam kes ni, dia kata which diagram produce the shortest time of impact. Okay, ha, ni belanggar lah ni. Belanggar concrete. Metal plate, langgar concrete. Sponge, langgar concrete. Metal spring, langgar concrete. Plastisin, langgar concrete. Okay, mana yang ada shortest time of impact. Okay, between these four. Metal plate. Yes, metal plate. Uh, okay, because spine absorbing. So, bila dia absorb, lambat sikit. Okay, metal spring, spring pun dia absorbing. So, lambat sikit. Plasticine pun dia absorbing, dia lambat sikit. Okay. So, kalau macam D, kata D tu dia melekat. Uh, okay, dia melekat. Tapi dia absorb, kita ada kurang less impact. Kita kena faham, kita bukan impact kepada plasticine, pada spring, pada sponge. The impact is on the trolley. So, that metal plate, sponge, metal spring and plasticine, the purpose of metal plate, sponge, metal spring and plasticine is to either increase or decrease the time of impact. So, metal plate, dia akan decrease time of impact. All the others yang bawah ni, semua increase. Increase, increase. Increase time, tujuan dia increase time, tujuan dia increase time. Okay. Alright, boleh? Eh, korang balik 22, dah ada ni ke? Dah ada apa-apa? Eh, korang balik bila? 24 sekolah kan? 23. 23. Dah keluar dah keluar arahan eh? Balik 23. Sekolah dah keluar arahan balik 23 ke? Tak tahu. Tak tahu lah. Dengar macam 23. Tak tahu lah. Ya, yeah, sebab parent ha. kurang kerja ke apa ke? Tak ada. Ikut korang kena balik awal balik Sabtu ke? Ha, tak sure. Sebab sekolah dia Rabu. So if kalau Rabu semaknya korang, parent korang kena ambil cuti. So tak pastilah dia. Hmm. Cikgu pun tak tahu. Okay. So Karim. Karim weight on earth. 800 Newton. What will happen to his weight on the moon? Okay. So earth. Moon. We have different size, we have different gravitational acceleration, we have different composition. Okay, so Earth, the weight is mass time gravity of Earth, which is, ini 800, ini tak tahu berapa, gravity of Earth 10, so that's why kita tahu mass is 800 over 10, 80 kilogram. So this is the mass. So, what is mass? Uh, so, kalau orang tanya, what is mass? Uh, mass tu apa? Hmm. 
Hmm. Mass tu is a quantity of matter. Maksudnya dalam badan kita ni, kita punya matter jirim, the mass will be 80 kg. But the weight is different. The weight depend on the gravitational acceleration. So kita duduk bumi, our mass is 80 kg but our weight will be 800. So kalau nak ringan, boleh pergi bulat. Sebab bulan, gravity dia is mass untuk moon, gravity dia adalah 1 over 6 daripada gravitational acceleration of earth. Ha, maknanya kalau kita dekat bulan, berat kita akan jadi Okay, our weight will be 80 times 1 over 6 times 10. Uh, so, 80 times 10 divided by 6. So, kita hanya 133.3 Newton. Uh, so, siapa nak rasa ringan, boleh pergi bulan. So, beratnya berkurang. Okay, tapi apa yang remain unchanged? Yang remain unchanged adalah mass. Okay, unchanged is mass. Okay. Dapat tak? Dapat. Okay. So, force. Okay. 2018 barulah keluar yang sengit-sengit ni. Ha, so, sebelum ni semua tak keluar. Okay, what is the difference? Sekejap ada soalan. What is the difference between mass and weight? Uh, mass is our quantity of matter. Maksudnya, uh, orang kata apa? Quantity jirim yang ada dalam badan kita. Uh, so, bila kita timbang, kita tak pernah timbang weight. Kita timbang mass. Okay, sebenarnya yang kita timbang tu is our mass, not our weight. So, kalau dekat bumi, kita pakai that, uh, walaupun dia panggil weighing balance, korang dapat like your mass katalah 50 kg korang pergi dekat bulan pun dia 50 kg okey tapi kalau dekat contoh dekat ISS uh, kalau korang pernah tengok dia kena timbang juga berat dia uh, dia orang kena timbang berat dia tapi dia tak boleh berdiri uh, so dia ada satu alat nama dia inertia balance okey nama dia inertia balance kan inertia related to mass so dia ada inertia balance, so penimbang dia, dia dia kena baring, dia kena letak benda tu atas dada, so dia kena macam macam nak cakap eh, macam uh, kita baring yang dia punya apa, macam benda tu hanya dia tutup kat badan kita je, dia macam cangkung sikit. Uh, so kita akan tekan and dia akan ukur berapa kita punya mass. Okay. Uh. So weight will be different. Different position sebenarnya kita ada different weight. Even dekat bumi pun secara secara sebenarnya ha, kalau kalau betul betulnya kalau kita pergi kutub berbanding kita pergi okay bumi kita kan bujur macam telur. Ha, bumi tak bulat sebenarnya bumi bujur. So kalau kita pergi ke sini dengan ke atas different tau. Ha, so kalau kita pergi kawasan kutub Okay, kita pergi kawasan kutub, kita punya weight lebih rendah. Okay, kalau kita pergi kat tepi ni, ke belah-belah tepi macam ni, weight kita lebih tinggi. So, different position on earth pun sebenarnya ada different value of gravity. Tapi tak jauh lah. Contohnya kat sini 9 point, uh, kata ni 9 point 81. Atas ni kalau ukur 9 point 73 gitu. Uh, so, kalau kita darab pun tak adalah jauh sangat gravity dia. Okay, bumi lepeh. <laughs> Itulah. Flat earth kan. Penat cikgu dia ajar kat sekolah. Okay. Penat cikgu dia ajar dari sekolah. Kat sekolah lalu. Tapi kat sekolah pun salah juga. Sebab kata bumi bulat. Sebenarnya bumi macam telur. Okay. Alright. Dia macam telur yang hampir bulat. Tapi dia tak bulat. Uh, okay, tu bumi sebenar. Tapi sebab kita dah biasa buat bulat, so kita buat bulat je lah. Okay. Sebab sekarang kalau kita kata bumi telur pula, uh, dah ada pula satu grup lagi. Grup bumi bulat, bumi lepeh, bumi telur. Uh, so mana betul. 
Okay, so diagram show a luggage being pulled with a force 50 Newton. What is the magnitude of Fx? Okay, so ini nak tak nak korang kena guna trigo, cos and sine. So kita buat kat sini, ni segi tiga. So bawah ni adalah Fx. So 50 is basically the hypotenuse. So kita ada sudut kat sini. So kita kena pakai kah. Okay, cos. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos 50 adjacent over hypotenuse. So Fx will be 50 cos 50. Uh, berapakah 50 cos 50? Thirty two point one four. Okay. So that's the force. Okay, ni kita panggil apa? Ni kita panggil resolving force. Resolve. Okay, yang ni korang akan belajar lagi. Kalau masuk metrik ke masuk ni ke, korang akan belajar lagi. So ni korang punya sini-sini dah dapat universiti, dia orang masuk bulan Ogos kot, bulan Ogos. Uh, so sini-sini korang pun dah tanya, cikgu tak buat ke fizik universiti? Fizik matriculation. Okay, uh, mana lagi? Okay, last one. Work, energy and power. Uh, which action increase efficiency? Efficiency is output over input times 100%. So, ni efficiency. Okay. So, macam ni kita nak increase efficiency. Okay, efficiency ni higher kalau this ratio is also higher. Okay, so macam ni kita nak bagi dia high. Ha, so contohnya, kalau contoh input, okay, katalah input 300. Okay, output pula, yang pertama output dia 100. Okay, kata 100 joule. Input 300 joule, output 100 joule. Dengan satu lagi, output 200 Joule. Okay, mana lagi efisien? So, secara efisiensinya, output over input times 100%. Yang sebelah lagi, output over input times 100%. Okay, so kita akan dapat the highest is yang output dia tinggi. So, cara dia adalah Increase di output. Okay, kalau increase input tak boleh juga. Increase input maksudnya contoh. Cikgu ada output yang sama. I have the same output. Output 200. Output 200. Tapi kita increase input. Input yang pertama. Uh, okay. Yang pertama mula-mula katalah uh, 100. Yang ni. Input dia kita increase kan. 300. So yang ini akan jadi 200 per 100. Pelik pula 200 per 100. Mana boleh. Ha, 200 juga. 200. So 200 bagi 200. 100% efficiency. Tapi yang ni 300. Eh sorry. 200 bagi 300. Ha, so kita akan dapat the efficiency is less. Which is only. 66%. Uh, so different guys tu. So A salah. So kita hanya increase the output power. Okay. Alright. Output over. Okay dia formula dia input over output ke? Output over input. 
Okay, output over input, you can put output over input power, output over input energy. Dua-dua boleh untuk cari efficiency. You can use a power and you can use an energy. It will be the same. Okay, dua-dua boleh. Untuk efficiency, boleh guna power, boleh guna energy. Okay, kalau kita belajar elektrik, uh, elektrik kan kita pakai uh, apa energy. Eh, kita pakai power. Okay, power input. Belajar elektrik, PVI. Uh, so, power input, V input, I input. Okay, lepas tu nanti power output, V output, current output. Ni elektrik. Uh, tapi kita still output over input. Okay. And the last one kat sini. Diagram show two identical spring. Spring acts without any load. While a load, 1000 newton. Wih, kuat ni spring ni. Ya, benar. 1000 newton is placed on the spring Y. So, dia compress by 2 cm. So, this is the X. So, bila kita kata X, sebenarnya X ada dua tau. X is compression like this one or extension. Okay, extension or compression is considered as X. So, in this case, X dia adalah 2 cm. Okay, what is the spring constant? Okay, so formula F equals to Kx. So spring constant is Kf over X. Okay, tengok dulu jawapan. Tengok dulu jawapan. Okay, so dia bagi apa jawapan dia? Newton centimeter. So cikgu kena tukar apa-apa tak? Unit. No need. No need. Okay. Masukkan F. 1000 over 2 cm. So we get if you give 500 Newton baru dia act compress 1 cm. So kuat spring ni. Okay. Because the value of K is high. 500 Newton baru dia turun 1 cm. Okay. So this is a stiffer spring. Stiffer. Keras. Nah, contoh macam absorber kereta kan spring dalam dekat tayar tu absorber tu ha, tu spring yang higher spring constant. Spring dekat buayan, buayan baby ha, tu pun higher spring constant. So the answer is 5 times 10 to the power of 2. Okay, semua okay? Dapat? Dapat. Dapat cikgu. Dapat. Alright. Mari kita melangkah ke, cik melangkah ke muka surat paper tu. Alhamdulillah dah sampai. Cikgu number nak 69. Kenapa kan 69? Eh, oh cikgu tak pergi ke atas. Sorry, sorry. Tak perasan. Okay, which action reduce the efficiency of a car? Reduce the efficiency eh. Okay. Uh, ini pun soalan berfikir. Right. So first time ambil lumayan yang kita tahu. Uh, aerodynamic is good. So bila aerodynamic kita akan ada less air resistant. So your car can move faster. So, bila your car can move faster, so your engine doesn't have to perform banyak macam, dia macam tahu, engine tu kalau dia bagi tenaga, tapi sebab dia nak kena lawan dengan udara, dia macam waste of that energy. Sepatutnya that energy is convert, nak gerakkan kereta, tapi some of the energy is used to overcome the air friction. So, aerodynamic akan ada less air resistant, so the efficiency of a car engine is better. Okay, hybrid. Okay, nanti lu. Lubricating the moving part. Ha, so, lubricate pun betul. Ini akan higher efficiency, lubricate. 
Sebab lubricate ni tujuan dia macam kita pakai minyak, minyak hitam dan sebagainya Tujuan dia bila dia dia bergerak tu, engine bergerak, piston dia bergerak, less friction Okay, so less friction Less energy loss So ada less friction Okay Higher density Higher density, so kita faham dulu density apa Density is mass over volume So kalau ada higher density, nanti dia ada higher mass So berat Macam kita belajar benda berat susah nak gerak So bila benda berat susah nak gerak, main engine kena buat banyak kerja nak bagi dia gerak ha. Right, so jawapan dia adalah Ini Okay, so bila ada higher density, so the engine Need to do extra work Or energy to move the car. Okay, hybrid. Okay, hybrid kenapa? Okay, uh, siapa tahu hybrid ni macam mana? Huh. Hybrid macam mana? Korang mesti ada, ada siapa-siapa pakai kereta hybrid. Okay, so hybrid tu macam mana? Ke kau ingat hybrid tu je nama? Kereta Prius. Ah, okay. Ah, siapa yang pakai Prius? Okay, hybrid tu macam mana? Apa beza hybrid dengan kereta biasa? Banyak dah hybrid. Pakai elektrik. Yes, dia double. Dia dua. Kalau hybrid, hybrid tu maksudnya double. Dia bukan elektrik saja. Kalau elektrik saja macam Tesla tu elektrik. Okay. Uh, dia, kalau hybrid ni maksudnya dia still pakai minyak but The, perf, the function of the oil kat situ Dia boleh tukar-tukar tau Kalau macam dia nak start engine Dia guna minyak Nanti bila dia dah gerak Okay, bila dah gerak at certain speed Untuk sampai certain speed dia tak pakai minyak langsung Dia pakai bateri uh, So bateri tu kalau Bateri dekat mana? Bateri dekat seat belakang uh, Okay, bateri dia ada dekat seat belakang So dia ada dua-dua So kalau kata speed up Yes, dia akan pakai minyak balik uh, Okay Tapi yang macam Tesla Tesla tu power lah. Pakai elektrik sahaja. So tak ada pencemaran. Ah Tak ada pencemaran dari segi less lah. Less carbon. Uh, apa orang panggil? Uh, dia panggil Allah aku lupa nama dia. Carbon uh, trace. Carbon apa? Trace. Carbon trace. Oh, Boleh lah. Tapi kira pencemaran carbon lah bahasa mudahnya. Because kita ada banyak sangat kereta ni semua. Sebenarnya ada pencemaran carbon. So tak tak elok lah. Sebab tu orang cari another solution untuk ni. Sebab kalau tak prevent, tak silapnya by 2030 our earth uh, memang mati lah senang kata. Sebab ice dan sebagainya. So kita kena reduce that. Kena reduce that supaya kita dapat pulihkan balik ozon dan sebagainya. Carbon footprint. Ah yes, that's a correct term. Carbon footprint. Okay, carbon footprint. So that's why orang buat electric car, orang buat hybrid, that's the purpose. Ah, dia kalau lagi bagus semua orang balik macam zaman dulu, jalan kaki, naik basikal kan. Ah. Okay, macam PKP. Kita boleh betulkan ozon layer ke? Dia kita tak betulkan. Dia macam automatik. Uh, kalau korang tengok uh, report, report NASA, report siapa ke baru ni? WHO kan ada ada yang report pasal ozon ozon layer pulih berapa persen? 18% I think. Uh, so agak bagus juga kalau duduk rumah. Ah uh, tu yang orang kata manusia yang merosakkan alam ini. Uh, so tak ada manusia baru alam ni bersih sikit. Okay. Paper 2. Uh, 2.1. So 2.1 kita buka ke paper 2. Macam cikgu cakap sebelum ni, 2.1 ni ada dua. Satu soalan kinematik. Kinematik is yang kita belajar A V minus U over T lepas tu S U T plus half A T square V square U square plus 2 A S And last one is S equals to half U plus V T. Okay, ada empat equation. So, ini kita panggil kinematic equation. So, kita belajar about motion. Mesti ada lima huruf. Okay, motion mesti ada lima huruf. We need to know the displacement. How long uh, dia dah berjalan. How far dia dah berjalan. Okay, 
And A, what is the acceleration? And time, masa yang dia ambil, how long? And then initial velocity. And the last one is the final velocity. So, bila cakap motion, kena ada lima perkara ni. Okay, satu. Okay, satu. Setiap formula pula, korang akan nampak hanya ada empat huruf. Tak ada lima-lima huruf. The first one, tak ada S. Second one, tak ada V. Tak ada T. Last one, tak ada A. Okay, to the first one. And another one yang kita belajar in 2.1 is this, a ticker tape. Okay, so this is an experiment for ticker tape. Okay, the ticker timer vibrate frequency 50 hertz. So, kenapa 50 hertz? Because kita punya electrical supply in our country. Okay, dekat negara kita ni, kita supply electric range dia 50 to 60 hertz. Korang boleh tengok beli alat-alat elektrik mana-mana korang beli pergi tengok dekat alat tu. Dia ada dia, dia, dia punya rating belakang tu. Cuba tengok dia tulis frekuensi. Frekuensi dia akan tulis 50 hertz to 60 hertz. Okay. So kita belajar alternating current. Just check nak cerita. Ingat balik kita belajar alternating current. Ha, dia atas bawah atas bawah tu. Maknanya berapa lama dia nak tukar. Berapa lama dia nak tukar direction. Okay. Dia tukar direction dia hanya ambil 0.02 second. Ha, so tu cerita elektrik sikit. So kita apply dekat sini. Okay, so this is the power supply, alternating current, see, alternating current. So, bila current flow, ticker timer, ha, ni dia tulis ticker tape je. Okay, ticker tape yang atas ni, bawah dia ni, ni ticker timer. Okay, ticker timer will vibrate. Berapa banyak dia vibrate, dia akan vibrate 50 times. Okay, 50 times in one second. So, the, the tick... Okay, the time, 1 over frequency, 1 over 50. That's why kita dapat 0 0.02 second. Okay, so kalau kita ada tick, again, this is dot. Okay, ni dot. Ni dot. Tick adalah tengah ni. Ha, so, kita kena kira yang tengah tu. Okay, so kalau dia turun, surely dia akan accelerate. So, untuk ticker tape, macam cikgu terangkan tadi, this is one tick, second tick, third tick, fourth tick. Okay, korang kena careful kalau ayat paper, kalau ayat trial, kadang-kadang dia buat macam ni. Dia kata, there is five dot. Ha, tu kena hati-hati tu. There is five dot. Sebab apa kena hati-hati? Because if you have five dot, you only have four tick. Okay, tu kena hati-hati. Dot and tick. Dia selalu confuse kat situ. Okay, and another thing, tengok dia punya motion. So, this one is moving to the left. So, kalau dia bergerak ke left, left ni start dengan left U. Okay, dia, pot dia ketuk yang left dulu, baru dia ketuk yang belakang ST. Okay, so underline the correct answer. The type of current used in the ticker timer is an alternating current. Okay, kita akan power supply. Kita akan guna power supply. Power supply kat rumah kita memang alternating current. Power supply yang plug rumah korang tu semua alternating current. Okay, alternating current. So the next one. Based on the diagram, one tick represent by the time taken from point ah yang ni ikut suka ah point mana nak buat one tick is consider from mana nak ambil one tick okey kau nak tulis huruf apa kat situ one tick one tick represent by point p to q p to q sekatilah p to q kalau ada yang buat uh, q to r Okay, R to S. Okay, boleh. Okay, complete. Uh, compare the distance. Compare the distance. PQ and ST. Compare. So, kalau compare, PQ is shorter than ST. Okay, and number three, state the type of motion. So, motion dia apa? Ah, okay. 
based on this, what type of motion? Okay. Acceleration. Acceleration, yes. Accelerate. Okay, linear motion. Ah, betul, memang linear motion. Memang topik dia linear motion. Okay, topik dia memang linear motion. Cuma, kalau dia tanya what type of motion tu yang kita cerita uh, accelerate, decelerate, constant velocity, uh, yang tu. Okay, yang ni accelerate sebab dari rapat jadi jauh. Okay, so kalau ikutkan ini soalan nombor dalam SPM, soalan nombor satu. So that's why 2011 nombor satu markah dia empat je. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four, empat, empat, empat je. Okay, empat soalan sahaja. Okay, soalan nombor dua, cerita pasal force. Uh, okay, so kita belajar force, balance and unbalance. Okay, kita tengok dulu, what is the meaning of balance force? Okay, so apa maksud balance force? Okay, siapa nak cuba? What is the meaning of balance force? When net force is equal to zero. Hmm, okay. Kalau nak buat macam tu boleh. The net force act upon an object is zero. Okay. So, ingat you dah pesan banyak kali. Tip dia apa? Apa dua condition yang kita kena tahu? Acceleration zero. First, kalau stationary, nombor dua, kalau uniform or constant velocity. Good. Okay, nombor dua. When the engine thrust is 5,000, the car move at constant speed. State the net force acting on the car. Okay, berapa jawapan? Okay, when the engine thrust is 5,000 Newton, the car move at constant speed. So, this is the keyword. Constant speed or constant velocity. So, what is the net force? The net force is equal to 0 Newton. Ha, kalau tak tulis macam tu pun tak apa. Tulis macam ni pun boleh. 0 Newton. Yang salah kalau tulis macam ni. 0. Ataupun tulis... Net force, zero. Kalau boleh tulis Newton. Okay. Unit, unit dia. Zero Newton. Okay, zero Newton. Ha, ni bukan on tau. Ni bukan on. Ni zero Newton. Okay, zero Newton. Okay. Okay, what is the resistive force acting on the car? Uh -huh. Okay. Kalau dia move with constant speed, what will be the resistive force acting on the car? Okay, dia kata engine thrust ni 5,000 and the car move with uniform speed. Constant speed. So, what will be the resistive force? 5,000 Newton. 5,000 Newton. Okay, the resistive force is 5,000 Newton. So, 5,000 minus 5,000, that's why lah dapat zero. Okay, kalau soalan SPM, dia selalu macam ni. Ni cikgu terang siap-siap. Dia kalau keluar force, dia tak keluar balance je sampai habis. Dia memang soalan dia selalunya dia akan start balance, lepas tu mesti ada unbalance. Okay, balance, unbalance. Ataupun dia buat soalan unbalance dulu, lepas tu dia akan tanya pula balance. Dia mesti combine dua tu. Selalunya dia akan combine. Even paper tu bahagian B or bahagian C. Dia akan combine. So, dekat sini, when the engine thrust increase to 9,000, maksudnya bila masuk C, C is another question, which is this one is about unbalance. Sebab soalan pun tanya, what is the acceleration? So, dia kata the engine thrust now, instead of 5,000, has been increased to 9,000. So, what will be the acceleration? So, ingat formula dia, net force equals to mass times acceleration. So, net force is 9,000 
minus 5,000 resistive force dia. Okay, resistive force dia jangan lupa 5,000. Mass, berapa mass dia? Mass dia 1,000 times A. So, 4,000, 1,000 A. So, A sama dengan 4. Okay. Alright. Dapat bakar tak you tulis ni? Tak. Kenapa? Uh, unit. Unit. Kalau cikgu tinggal macam ni, maka hanya kosong. Walaupun ada jalan kerja kat atas. Okay. MS negatif tu. Alright. Gitulah soalannya. Yang sengit-sengit tu tak pernah keluar lagi. Tapi setakat ni, kalau soalan macam ni ada. Soalan yang ada ada sudut, ah yang tu tak pernah lagi. Kita okay, tak pernah lagi. Kalau nak masuk tahun korang pun tak tentu. Kalau kita letak unit salah pun kosong. Ah tu kelebihan dia. Unit salah contohlah. Unit salah dapat satu. Sebab jalan kira ada kat atas. Tapi kalau unit tak ada dia kosong terus. Okey. Ah so kalau blur sangat bubuhlah unit. <tuh> Tapi tolonglah janganlah bubuh mengagak-agak sangat. Tiba-tiba Acceleration, 4 Newton. Takkan pelik tu. Bubur lah unit yang selalu orang akan salah macam ni. MS negative 2, dia tulis MS negative 1. Tu kesalahan lazim. Apa lagi kesalahan lazim? Ah? Uh, selalu macam tu lah. MS negative 2, tertulis MS negative 1. Tu kesalahan-kesalahan yang selalu berlaku. So next one. Ha, ni masih lagi tiga tip. Masih lagi soalan nombor satu. Okay. So yang ni dia tak bagi tahu mana arah. Dia tak tahu pun mana arah. So cikgu pun tak tahu. Dia ke kiri ke ke kanan. Tapi kalau what type of motion. Based on your observation. What will be the type of motion. So cikgu rasa kalau cikgu buat kiri ke. Cikgu buat kanan pun motion dia sama. Okay, what type of motion is this? Constant velocity. Yes, this is a constant velocity. So, tak kisahlah kiri ke kanan pun, dia sama. Constant velocity. Or also boleh buat constant speed. Okay, one tick. Soalan masih sama macam tadi korang tengok. Ni ulang balik 2016. Nampak tak? 2011 tadi last. Lepas tu ni ulang balik 2016. After 5 years. So one tick is the time taken from P to Q. Okay, yang tadi dia open. Ah Boleh bubuh mana-mana huruf. P, Q, Q, R, R, S. Boleh bubuh. Yang ni dia buat one tick is time taken from P to So P kepada Q. Okay, complete the following sentence. The ticker tape can be analyzed. Kita boleh guna ticker tape untuk tentukan apa? Okay, dari ticker tape kita boleh kira apa? Distance and speed. Distance and speed. Okay, and, uh, ni jawapan dia. Tapi kalau ada satu lagi perkara kita boleh kira daripada ticker tape. What is it? Distance, speed. And... Acceleration. Time taken. Yes. Time taken. Time taken pun boleh. Tengok dia punya number of tick. Okay. Time taken. So ni perkara-perkara kita boleh dapat daripada ticker tape. Okay. Dari ticker tape tak boleh dapat force. Kenapa tak dapat force? Force is equals to mass time acceleration. Acceleration we can get from ticker tape. Tapi mass tak boleh dapat dari ticker tape. Same thing with momentum. Momentum Mass time velocity. Velocity boleh dapat dari ticker tape. Tapi tak boleh dapat mass dari ticker tape. Okay. That's why tak boleh ambil yang tu. Okay. So dah dua markah. Lagi dua. What type of motion by the ticker tape? Constant velocity. Okay. Ha, kenapa? Ha, ni cikgu nak tunggu jawapan korang. Kenapa? 
Kenapa kita kata constant velocity? In your opinion, kenapa kita kata constant velocity? Distance between each tick is the same. Okay, betul. Good. Because the distance between each dot is the same. Tak boleh each tick. Kenapa tak boleh buat each tick? Uh, sebab tick tu dia punya gap. Uh, so kalau nak buat distance between each dot ataupun uh, the gap between dot, uh, boleh. Okay, the gap between dot is the same. Uh, the gap between the dot is the same pun boleh. Okay, so that's why lah kita kata dia constant velocity. Okay, habis kat situ. Okay. Ini inisia dan juga wave. Uh, inisia and wave. Nak masuk ni takut tak sempat. Inisia and wave. Hmm. Hmm, yang ni cikgu simpan lah. Okay, yang ni cikgu simpan esok boleh tak? Boleh. Boleh. Yang ni cikgu simpan esok lakut inisia ni. Lepas tu naik momentum. Effect of force. Force equilibria. Oh, soalan ni best. Ni nanti kita buat ni lah. 2015. Ramai kantui. Okay, yang tu okay. F force tu ramai ni juga. Force ni okay. Impulsive force ni okay. Ah, momentum ni start ramai kantui. Okay, yang engine ni ramai tak faham. Uh, ah. Satu lagi ni. 2014. Hmm. Hmm. 14 ramai takut. Okay, okay. Boleh. Uish. Jauh lagi perjalanan kita ni. Ya Allah, banyak lah. Hmm. Teng -teng. Baik. Kenapa cikgu punya ni hilang? Okay. Dia dah tu. Alright. Oh, sebab dia bertiup-tiup. Okay. Eh, siapa yang data keluar? 26. Tadi ada 27. Alright. Okay, so kita stop yang ni dulu. Okay, sampai tadi. Uh, paper 2. So, esok kita sambung. Eh, esok. Esok kan? Sekejap, sekejap. Cikgu cek balik. Ya, yeah, esok. Okay, esok kita jumpa pergi pukul 8. Lepas tu, rehat sehari. Sambung balik 17. Rehat sehari. 18. Eh, 19. Rehat sehari. 21. 22, 24. Okay. Alright. Tapi, kita pun tinggal berapa kelas ni? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wow, 6 kelas je lagi. Sempat ke kita? Kita tak habis apa lagi? Uh, Bab mana kita tak habis lagi? Lima dah kan? Form 4. Lima dah. Form 5 semua dah habis. Okay. Uh, siapa ingat? Uh, form 4 kita chapter 5 dah habis. Lepas tu sekarang chapter 2. Hmm. Uh, heat belum, force dan pressure belum. Hmm. Um, Hmm, dua lah maknanya. Pressure dengan heat lah belum kan? Uh -huh. Dengan chapter one. Okay, okay. Tapi bab ni panjang. Bab dua ni panjang. Cikgu paling paling susah nak buat bengkel bab dua lah. Sebab dia panjang. Ha. Okay. So kita rehat dulu. Ha. Kita jumpa esok. Siapa yang tak makan dah boleh pergi makan. Okay. So kita jumpa esok pukul 8. Boleh? Boleh. Okay. Alright semua. 
Thank Jumpa you. korang esok. Welcome. Bye, cikgu. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. okay, thank you. Thank you, Rashida. Thank you, everyone. Ui, lajunya semua orang keluar. Tujuh, enam, lima.